Okay, how is everybody doing this evening? Uh, of course, my name is Kent, and I'm in freezing California. So if you're wondering about uh, the weather forecast and you want to get out of the cold weather, don't come to California because it's really cold here right now. In fact, it's been cold for quite some time. So if you're hearing on the weather about the bad weather in California, it's all true. It's freezing, absolutely freezing here in San Diego. In fact, it's so cold, I don't know if I want to spend another winter in San Diego. I'm going south next winter. This is just too cold here in San Diego. So, I've not made a video for quite some time, actually quite a few months. I think three or four months. And the reason I haven't made a video is because I picked about the two worst topics you could ever pick to make videos on. The crypto market, mainly EOS, and Nebraska football. I made some videos on Nebraska football. And both, both, both things just <laughs> turned out terrible. I mean, the crypto market really tanked basically because of that sand bankman freed or fraud or whatever they call him, the freaky guy with the big hair. Um, you know, he, he uh, FTX, I guess is what it was, basically ruined the crypto market for a few months. So it's like, I, I didn't even want to make a video about that. That guy was such a weirdo. I never liked him. I always thought he was untrustworthy and... Um, you know, when that whole FTX thing blew up, become a, um, you know, one of the biggest scandals ever. In fact, one of the biggest Ponzi schemes ever. You know, I always knew that that thing was not to be trusted. And of course, guys like Mike Novogratz got caught up in it and a lot of other people. Billions of dollars got lost. And this guy pretends like he doesn't know what happened. And is he just acts really, really, really weird. I mean, just a strange guy. Anybody that strange, uh, that's that unsociable, that can't communicate very well, that just seems weird, in fact, I saw a short one time with him and Tom Brady, and Tom Brady, I mean Tom Brady, you know, the all-time great quarterback, is doing a video with Sand Bank and Freed, and he's trying to get him to come to the, uh, to do the video, to come to, to the camera, and the guy keeps running off. And it's just like, you know, you got an opportunity to do a video with, you know, uh, Tom Brady, and you keep, keep running away. So the guy is just a weird, weird guy, he ended up being a big deal. And it's just like, I couldn't make any videos during that period of time, it's just, it was just, just, not not worth it. It just I just didn't want to talk about Sam Bankman Fried and of course the crypto market just totally tanked. I think Bitcoin went all the way below fifteen thousand and it was just too depressing to make videos. And then I made a few videos about Nebraska football <clears throat> and was excited about Mickey Joseph. He's a pretty good quarter, quarter he's a quarterback for Nebraska back in the in the late nineteen nineties and uh, early you know, late eighty. Uh, I think he was in the nineteen early nineteen nineties late nineteen eighties. I thought he was going to be a good quarterback, good recruiter, and then the guy ends up getting in trouble for beating up his wife. So, gets thrown in prison and the whole thing. So, I was just too depressed to make Nebraska videos, because, and really Nebraska is really kind of an interesting story. The reason I like to, to watch it is because I grew up in Nebraska, as I've told people on this video, or on this channel many times, and it was such a dynasty for so long, and then it just turned into the biggest, the biggest, um, you know the biggest horror story you ever want to you know, ever want to talk about so it was kind of interesting to me how far it had fallen and i was wondering if they were ever going to come back and of course when they got joseph and kind of rehired a few people then i thought maybe the opportunity was there for for him to come back and by the way i'm right in front of the that tom cruise movie the uh what are they called maverick or used to be top gun this is this this is how dead it is here in california they don't even have anything and usually this place is full of people because it's so cold tonight that it's just that even in front of this house this top gun house it's it's completely empty and look at the motorcycle here's the motorcycle right there if you can see it they've actually taken the seat and stuff off like probably because it, they think someone's going to steal it so but here's the top gun house if you're ever come to california it's worth seeing because this is a very nice area but it is so cold right now no one's even here this is just it's a complete kind of a ghost town and of course, I'll turn around, spin around, so you can see the Oceanside Pier, which is right behind me. I hope I'm not giving you, getting you dizzy by spinning around. Right behind me is the Oceanside Pier. Really nice. You can walk clear out to the ocean. So anyway, back to Nebraska football. So it's funny, the last two coaches Nebraska's had, Scott Frost and Mickey Joseph, probably neither one could get a job right now with a high school football team, let alone a Power 5 football team or a Division One football team. That's how bad it is in Nebraska football. And of course, they hired a guy by the name of Matt Rule, and everybody's excited because this guy is, uh, is 
going to take him to the promised land, according to everybody. But we they, everybody said that about Frost, too. The only problem I have with Matt Rule is I think the guy's making like $10 million a year. And um, he just got fired from his previous job. So that's really nice. You get fired from your previous job because you didn't win enough games. You get hired by Nebraska. You get like double the amount they paid the previous guy. And I think it's a whole contract's worth like, I don't know, $80 million. I don't even know. But when you get start getting paid that kind of money, it, it just starts to become, uh, you know, insane land. You don't know, you know why they have to pay a guy that has yet to perform that kind of money and not, not have some kind of incentive clause in it, just say, hey, we're going to pay you that money. And, of course, I think it's mainly because of a guy by the name of Trev Alberts, who's the athletic director. And I think Trev Alberts' um, logic is, hey, if we pay our football coach $10 million a year, that means the athletic director should be making at least five. So I don't know what Trev Alberts makes, but he, I think he keeps pushing these salaries higher and higher because he's hoping that because all the salaries go higher, that means his salary goes higher too. So, but yet the guy has yet to produce anything. I hope he does well, but um, everybody's excited about him, but I don't, I know nothing's happened yet, so we'll see what happened. So that will be remain to be seen, but I will watch the, some of the games and I will probably continue to make videos about Nebraska football. Not at the same time as I'm making crypto videos because I'll probably try to keep them separate, but I'm just trying to give some reason why I haven't made videos for the last few months. So I want to talk just briefly a little bit about EOS tonight because I do my my main you know topic used to be EOS, but EOS kind of fell off the map, and of course with all the problems uh, Block One had, and uh, now the ENF has had to take that over and try to make something out of it, and I knew the EF was on a tight timeline to try to make something happen. They had to go out there and really spark the market, and of course with cryptocurrency the only way it's successful you can do anything you want to do. I mean, the thing about EOS is the fastest blockchain in the world, fastest transactions. You know, you're not like back in the days of Swift where you're taking weeks or days to, uh, to make transactions. You're making these tra transactions almost instantaneous. So they've got the fastest, one of the fastest blockchains in the world, if not the fastest blockchain in the world. You know, they have, it's operational, functional. We run an application on it. It's called the challenge application. Uh, Everything is going well for them, but you know, they're in a sour market, and the problem is, is if you don't get some excitement in the markets, if you don't get people buying the token, um, and by the way, they did have an A, uh, ask me anything, uh, question, uh, AMA with, uh, with Binance, and I think they're going to have a stable coin with Binance running on the EOS blockchain, which is super, super cool, because uh, the uh, guy's got a motorcycle out here. He's freezing to death, probably. The reason that is a really nice idea is because you got a way of transferring uh, a stable coin on the fastest blockchain in the world. So anytime you want to move something around, money around, you got the super fast blockchain and it's running on EOS and of course it's, uh, it's a stable coin with Binance. And of course, if you don't know who Binance is, Binance is probably the largest, uh, well, actually Binance is the Chinese government. There's no reason to say anything different. Ch China's like uh, the Soviet Union. The major companies are all state-owned and run by the government or run by the governments. So, you know, Binance is basically the Chinese government. So, um, you know, EOS has got a stablecoin with them. So that's a really good update, a really good thing. But it needs to, it needs to be um, something that people find interesting enough that they start purchasing the token from the exchanges. So they got to get some volume going. That's all there is to it. EOS has got to get volume going, even though they've got a good story, they've got some good good news, you know, a connection with Binance. Uh, I think they're in their fourth Pamela grant season, so they're actually distributing some of the money out to the to the, 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 the builders like we are. So that's a really good thing, Pamela, which is a way to get money to help build, a way that you can actually support your your project by people voting for you. And, and giving you some grant money, that's, 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 that's like amazing. That's what should have happened in the beginning. That's why EOS failed as a blockchain under block one because they failed to give back any or help the developers like they had promised. So that's going on right now. We got Pamela going on. The fourth, uh, the fourth um, edition of Pamela, I think they're doing it uh, quarterly. 
every three or four months, I can't remember. But if you, if you want to do a grant, check out Pomelo. I put the, I'll put the, uh, if you want to write a grant, check it out. I've done a couple grants and you know, it's, 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 it's really worth your time and effort to get involved and build on this chain. And hopefully some of this translates into some volume, some, uh, some purchasing. So the ENF obviously, who is in control of the chain right now, which is, uh, used to be EOS um, Nation up in Canada, um, you know, they're operating from, you know, the inflation that's created from the chain. So in order, so, so if they get some to tokens for their efforts, and of course they get tokens for being block producers too, they've got to be able to liquidate those tokens. So those tokens have to go someplace. There has to be somebody out there to buy up the tokens so they can turn that, those tokens into, uh, into in a way to finance the operation and keep it growing. So they need to create volume on the exchanges. So if you're on Coinbase, if you're on uh, whatever exchange you like, I like Coinbase, other people, there's other exchanges people like, but uh, certainly, you know, look at buying a little EOS. You don't have to put a lot of money into it. 100 bucks, 200 bucks at this time may not be a bad idea. I know I always say buy a little EOS, and the last thing I ever thought it would be a little over a dollar, especially when it was, you know, over 22, $23. But, you know, it's, they've got things going on and you know, the ENF is still at work. So as long as the ENF can get a little liquidity and continue to grow the market, uh, continue to grow, get, you know, get, get, get deals um, and get things going, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe prosperity will happen here one day. Uh, I once, I once made a prediction about a hundred dollars. Uh, it, it doesn't seem like that may happen, but the way the, the U S dollar is def, uh, depreciating, the amount of money they're giving out to places like Ukraine and other places in the world, maybe $100 will be worth like $5 today. So maybe $100 will come, but that $100 just won't mean much at the time. So I do think there'll be a $100 EOS someday, but uh, I do think the money's going to be worth a lot less. And that's probably the main thing I want to talk about tonight. I want to talk about what's happening in the economy, the overall economy. And I believe that the overall econ economy is going to do the same thing it's been doing for the last hundred years, which is a cycle of inflation and deflation and cycles of where they, they inflate the money. They just, uh, things go crazy. They create all kinds of money. And then they go through cycles where we we're going through right now, where they depress the economy and they try to lower prices, artificially lower prices by trying to create, uh, you know, a raise interest rates, make it harder to buy a house, uh, tighten credit, can't borrow money. So that kind of stalls the economy and then other prices go down and then they all feel good because now we have lower prices, which means uh, things are less expensive and so people feel like the money has value. Well, in another year or two, it'll turn around and it, you know, the interest rates will probably go back down because they feel good about inflation uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, the interest, uh, the, the money will go like crazy. They'll start printing money again. Well, they're always printing money, but they'll print it even, even more. And then everything will go up in value, which houses will go up. Um, everything, the economy will just start, you know, taking off and everything will start getting more expensive. So that's just the cycle we're in. And that's a cycle we've been in for hundred, hundred, hundred over a hundred years since 1913. So it's going to be inflation, deflation. And overall, uh, eventually, they're going to have the money pretty, pretty much worthless. So uh, at this time, I believe that uh, there is a, you know, kind of a, a cooperative going on between, you know, the Soviet Union, the Russia, whatever they want to be called today, and China to, um, to try to devalue the dollar, to try to make the dollar so it's not world reserve currency. And make the dollar so it's not so widely de in demand around the world. Right now it's in demand around the world because it's a world currency. So whatever you want to exchange from country to country, mainly oil, you know, you do that in the U.S. currency, the U.S. dollar, which always makes a demand for currency, our U.S. dollar, which always keeps the, the money worth, have a, have a good value. Now, if they get this changed where they can start purchasing, you know, Soviet, uh, Russia's oil in some other, uh, um, some other uh, currency, China starts accepting other currencies, um, 
you know, for, you know, starts buying and selling, getting their, their, their energy from other currencies. Well, there you go. Then less people will be holding the dollar and the dollar will start to depreciate, be worth less and less and less. And that's probably, that's the direction we're going in. Money is going to become, uh, it's going to be harder and harder to buy things because it's going to take more and more money to, to buy things. So if you're going to go to the grocery store, you, you know, we used to go to the grocery store with $100. Uh, when I was a kid, maybe go to the grocery store with $20. Uh, now you go to the grocery store with $100. Probably in the very near future, you're going to go to the store with $500. So, you know, uh, I, you know I, 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 we go out sometimes, you know, and if we want to really have a good meal, you know, we can spend three or $400 you know, at a nice restaurant. That was absolutely unheard of at a time. I, mean, I remember when, you know, buying a $100 meal was outrageous. Now, a $100 meal is just nothing. I mean, you can go out to a very ordinary restaurant, maybe Applebee's or something like that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, um, try to think of some of the chain restaurants everybody would know. But, you know, just go out to an ordinary chain restaurant, um, um, you know, and spend $100 really, really, really easy. So money will become worth less and less. So you're going to have to find some place to put your money that guards it against the inflation. Of course, hard assets like uh, real estate has always been a hedge of inflation. But the problem with that is taxes um, and a lot of other, you know, maintenance. You know, you have to keep things up. If you own real estate, there's always something you have to take care of. Uh, if you own property, um, property has to be maintained fences have to be taken care of um, you know if you own real estate uh, houses have to be taken care of they have to be maintained they have to be upkept so you know it's it's not the greatest thing to own real estate um, you know obviously you can own stocks but you know the stock market hasn't been great either you know one of the things people will always tell, tell me is how bad EOS is doing uh, well the stock market doesn't isn't doing so great either I mean I own Tesla and uh, it's done nothing but go down you know in fact i think i'm 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 uh, from when i bought my tesla stock i've lost money from that the time when i bought it i, I, I didn't buy it at, at the very high but uh, you know i bought it before it split and uh, since it split it's gone nothing but down so uh yeah i own tesla before it split and it's the money has just gone down and here here you got you know the, the guy that's you know supposedly the richest guy in the world most intelligent guy in the world has one of the most, you know, he's got SpaceX, he's got, you know, Tesla, and that guy's company is losing money. So if that's the case, then you know the economy is not good. So, you know, for everybody that wants to, uh, you know, dog on the cryptocurrencies, especially EOS, you know, find me something that's done, you know, that's done very well, that has done, you know, you know, last time I remember anybody making any money was in Bitcoin in around 2000, but nothing's done very well since that time. Uh, and so I think the value of the money is going to be a lot, lot, lot less. Um, and who knows what's going on over in Ukraine? I mean, um, a year ago, Biden said that intervention in Ukraine is World War III. Well, every day we get a little closer to World War III because, you know, they provide weapons for Ukraine. Um, they provide money for Ukraine and they just keep getting deeper into deeper into this thing. So I don't know where that's going to go. That could be a major problem for the world, especially with the amount of devastation and loss of life over there is incalculable. In fact, I talked to a guy today uh, that was lives in Poland and he was telling me he was from Belarus and he had to move to Poland because he said in Belarus, you couldn't even say anything negative about the, the government or negative about uh, any of the politicians. He said if you got said anything bad, just did anything negative, you would get fined. And if it was bad enough, you'd be thrown in prison. So here we are. We're living in the modern age, you know, 2023. We have the Internet, the exchange of information, and we still have people being put in prison because they say something negative about a politician, a public figure, somebody that has throw themselves out for the public to talk about somebody that's, that, that, that's in, in politics. And if you say something negative about him, guess what? You go to prison. That's just ridiculous. Just like this whole war in Ukraine is ridiculous. I mean, it reminds me of, you know, Nazi Germany. I mean, Russia, I mean, the Germans went into uh, areas or lands uh, uh, that they thought belonged to them. Um, but post-World War I, 
you know, they were trying to get back some of the land that they lost in World War One that they thought belonged to them. So they invaded because they wanted to go in and protect or, you know, the German people that were living in those lands that were no longer Germany or no longer in German, uh, under German uh, boundary or German. Uh, and now Putin's doing the same thing. He's going into Ukraine and he's going, this is our land post, you know, the collapse of the Soviet Union. Now we want to go back and reclaim it. This is just a replay of what happened almost 100 years ago in World War, in World War II. So we are regressing as a population. We're regressing as a people when stuff like this happens, when we're going back and rehashing history that happened over 100 years ago, almost 100 years ago. So, you know, this is all getting to be, you know, so much that... Uh, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a drag on people's lives. I mean, I can't even imagine what it's like to live in a country like Ukraine right now. You have no economy whatsoever. Most of the people have left the country. A lot of people have been killed. And um, people just, can, you know, the country continues to regress. So, I mean, they're fighting over what's going to be basically scorched earth. By the time it's all done, what's going to be left? You know, it's going to be no industry. Uh, very little agriculture and almost nobody there. So, you know, fo fighting over uh, basically, no, uh, you know, a, a, a piece of property, a piece of land is going to be worthless by the time they're done fighting over it. So, <clears throat> what I'd like to do is I'd like to continue this channel because I like YouTube. I think YouTube is an opportunity for someone just to be heard. And, you know, we have a unique opportunity, unlike any time in the world, for someone just to create a channel and talk and be heard. Oh look, cool, there's a bunch of bicycles coming down the road, I'll show you. So um, this is like a great time for people to have like a, a platform like YouTube and, uh, and just speak there, just speak whatever it is they want to say. Yeah, I hope I don't get demonetized over that music, but I doubt it, it's not that loud. So anyway, some low, low riders from Southern California on their bicycles. I guess gasoline's getting a little too expensive. So, um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to continue this channel and make this channel still continue to talk about EOS. Uh, I'll probably make a football channel every uh, a football video every now and then if you want to watch Nebraska football. But um, and of course I, I, I'm, I'm curious to see how Matt Rule is going to do. Like I said, the only thing I got against Matt Rule, the new current football coach in Nebraska, is he's getting paid way too much. That's the only thing I got against the guy. Um, you know, I hope he I hope he does well, but he's getting paid way way too much. I mean, when you're making like that kind of money, you're making generational money. I mean, you're making so much money, you've taken the incentive away. Uh, the thing that made Nebraska great was a guy by the name of Tom Osborne, even though I didn't think Tom Osborne was the greatest coach either, unlike other people. Uh, I got my problems with Tom Osborne. In fact, you could tell Tom Osborne's actually the genesis of this whole Nebraska downfall because he chose Frank Solich to be his successor. And uh, Frank Solich probably wasn't the greatest guy to be a successor. Frank Solich is probably an average coach, not a great coach. So he was the kind of the guy that got the ball rolling as far as Nebraska sliding downhill. The other thing in 19, uh, I think it was 83, uh, they had a chance to win the national championship and, and uh, by going for two, although they would have probably won the national championship if they had kicked the field goal, if they would have kicked the extra point. Uh, but he didn't, he ran a play and of course, Nebraska, being the running team, they had just run it down the University of Miami's throat. Uh, I think Jeff Smith ran it on a pitch play and ran all the way down to the, scored a touchdown. And the very next play, what's the guy do? He runs a rollout pass play and doesn't complete it. Falls incomplete and they don't win the national championship to come in number two. Now, the reason I think he made a huge mistake by doing that is that uh, I would have kicked the extra point because that's the hand that he got dealt. He would have tied Miami on their own field, which means that um, people would obviously voted for Nebraska's national champs because if they tie him on their own field and haven't had a loss where Miami had had a loss, they would have had a better record in Miami and they should have been national champs. But he didn't do that. Uh, the other thing is that... Um, um, he, if he if he would have kicked if if he, if he had run a running play on that extra point he probably would have won the game because because they would have run the the game the ball on that last play instead of passing it Turner Gill was a terrible passer he threw a very hard ball he didn't throw a ball these good quarterbacks can take balls and kind of arc them in you know make it easy to catch Turner Gill threw a real flat ball it didn't have 
you know, he threw it very, very hard. In fact, if you look at that play, he just really cranked on that ball, threw it to the guy, and and um, it was not a very good, very, very well thrown ball. And what's funny about that play is that one of my friends was in that play. His name is Mark Schleen. I knew Mark Schleen really well. In fact, I, I saw him advertise or saw him interviewed one time, and he said he wished to, Osborne would have kicked a point. So, um, so then Osborne doesn't kick the point. They lose the national championship, and um, because they, they do a really dumb play. Oh, back to my point. My point is, he had an out because at the time that they went for the extra point and didn't get it, there was still like 30 or 40 seconds. I think 40 seconds left in the game. So he had a he had a, he had a reasonable chance, not a great chance, but you know, a small percentage chance of kicking an uh, of kicking an onside kick and getting the ball. So. You know, he could have just basically said, look, I kicked the extra point, tied the game, and we were playing for the onside kick. And people would have thought no less of him because there still was like, you know, 45, 35, 40 seconds left. And if they, did, they, they didn't get the extra point or they didn't get to recover the onside kick, you know, that would have been say, hey, yeah, well, you know, we tried. We, we tried to get the extra point and not think, well, we had to win the game by, you know, running a two-point play. So I think that was a really bad call by Osborne. But back to my original point. Osborne always said the reason why he, he coached so well or coached so hard is because he was always in fear of losing his job. You know, he didn't, and at that time, coaches weren't paid you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. You know, coaches were paid like $100,000. Barry Switzer said in the glory years of Oklahoma, he was only making $100,000 a year. So you lose your job making $100,000 a year, that means you gotta find another job. So I think Osborne was always afraid of losing his job so he was a really good coach um, because he, you know, wanted to, um, you know, he wanted to, he, he didn't want to lose his job. Well, now when a guy's making 10, 12, 15 million dollars a year, you know, he's not so worried about losing his job because he coaches a couple of years, then he's, you know, he's got generational money to live on, so he's, he's still going to be okay. But um, so I think that um, paying these guys that much money is just absurd. It's ridiculous. Uh, it just it just takes the incentive out of it. You know, it's like when you're making that kind of money, you have no incentive. Like a guy like Osborne, he had incentive because he wasn't wasn't making enough money to where he could just retire and live. Like Scott Frost, Scott Frost will probably never work again. You know, he just live off the 50 million that he want, he, he got from Nebraska. Uh, and then the final thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about this guy, and I, I didn't even know who he was, even though he's the biggest YouTuber on YouTube right now. It's called Mr. Beast. Uh, young guy, I think he's 24 years old, and the only reason I know about this guy is because I was listening to Joe Rogan, and I'm not a big Joe Rogan fan, I don't really care for Joe Rogan, but I saw this, he's talking to this guy named Mr. Beast, and I think the guy's got like 130 or 140 million followers, and he's like obsessed with YouTube since he's been about 11 years old. So. And the reason it caught my attention is because somebody said that he was offered a billion dollars for his channel and he turned it down and said it was worth about 10 billion. And I saw someone go through the calculations and they said he was right, that the, the channel probably was worth more than a billion dollars. So here's a guy, not the smartest guy in the world, not the funniest guy in the world, certainly not the best looking guy in the world, not the most talented guy in the world, who just puts up videos uh, and has a billion dollar YouTube account. I want to talk about that for a second because I watched his videos and believe me, they're nothing to write home about. In fact, if anything, I think they're awful. And that's not because I, you know, think that I'm trying to, I'm, 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 I'm trying to belittle the guy because he's successful. I'm just telling you from my own, you know, from my own, you know, uh, uh, what I would find entertainment. Uh, this is these guys. His videos are absolutely unentertaining. But he has taken it down to a fine art. He's he's really he knows what the intangibles are. He knows how to make a good thumbnail. He knows the, the he calls the rhythm of the video. He knows you know what good lighting is, good sound is. He's done everything possible to enhance the you know, this, um, the, you know, the, the things that make a video, a, vi a video mean the title, all these things are very important. He's been able to, to make all that work and make it all work really well. 
But the funny thing I find about this guy is here's a kid who has created in a very short period of time, for a very short life, he's very young, a billion dollars worth of value in YouTube. And the only reason I would think somebody pay a value, and you don't even own anything in YouTube. The videos that he owns aren't even his. They belong to YouTube. The only reason that anybody's willing to pay that kind of money is because he's got this many people watching. He's got eyeballs on his channel, so they're willing to watch it. But the reason I find this interesting is because he's really done nothing but create content. And, and I, can, I, t I can tell you the content is, is, is very, I would say, it, 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 it's, 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 not, it's, not, um, it's not educational. It's, a, in my opinion, it's not funny. In my opinion, it's not interesting. It's just, it's just fluff. And uh, I'll give you an example of some of the stuff he did. He did one video here not too long ago where he spent a night in uh, Antarctica, the South Pole. And they, they were going to film it for a night. So they dropped off airplane. And then, of course, they have to spend the night in this horrible, horrible, inhospitable place. And, of course, then the content, you know, it degrades, de gravitates down to, uh, you know, defecation and urination. So, you know, now it's like, oh, we got to go pee or we got to go, you know, we got to go number two. And how are we going to do it? It's so cold. So, so that's the content. This guy's got like 100 million views on some content of being in a cold place thinking about how they're going to go poop and pee. So that's the kind of how this is how bad this content is. And the guy's made like hundreds and millions of dollars and got a billion dollar channel on this which is crazy because you know that's what's happening in today's world that's how people are getting by not by creating new inventions or or coming up with creative things or, or changing our world with uh you know like creating ways of uh transferring information wirelessly or w w stuff like that you know he's just creating you know elementary very uh you know low level edu you know kind of almost um you know adolescent kind of uh, uh, content he's made this kind of money and it's kind of funny because when we were younger you know we heard about bill gates you know and bill gates creates this this i this you know company microsoft out of his garage that was the story. Of course, we know that's probably not what happened. And then we hear about a guy by the name of uh, uh, Steve Jobs who creates Microsoft out of his garage. You know, these guys are, and of course they did create something. You know, Bill Gates had, uh, if he stole it or not, or if he uh, paid somebody for it, I've heard all of the stories of how he got the software, put the software together. I doubt that he was the creator of the software. But, you know, he had some, you know, it's something that some creativity, somebody put some some work work, work uh, product together, you know, uh, or with Steve Jobs, yeah, Wozniak, who, you know, he was able to create some stuff, you know, create the color, you know, be able to c create color on the screen. There was some stuff, there was some technological breakthroughs that they did. So there was some advancements in technology. You know, they had discovered undiscoverable things that the world some some have, had, had un unlocked some keys uh, you know, that the world, you know, being able to, to, to create an operating system for a computer, uh, creating, um, you know, a device, a, com a, home, a home computer system. You know, these were kind of ways, these advancements in, in making people's lives easier, making them better. Um, and that's why these people got so, uh, so, uh, so, that's why they become so popular and so rich. Well, now you got a guy, that's all he's doing, he's just creating videos. And kind of tasteless videos, in my opinion. And, but someone would argue with me, you know, hey, he's done some good work too. Like he created a video where he paid for some people to get cataract surgery and have their um, eyesight restored or get their eyesight better. And of course, he makes a big deal out of it. He restored a bunch of people, made, it, made, made the blind to be able to see again. But when you really watch the videos, and I listened to one of the videos to one of the guys that he had, he really overplayed it. He made it sound a lot more than it really was. And more, it was more like he paid for some cataract surgeries. And that was a good thing that he did. I mean, obviously a noble gesture to pay for somebody's cataract surgery. But he made it back many times over with the content monetization of the video. So he didn't really create anything. He just paid for a lot of people to have cataract surgery. 
turned it into a video and made a, you know a ton of money off of it. It wasn't like he did it out of his uh, yeah, you know did it out of the goodness of his heart and you know didn't recover or recoup the money from it. He just you know he did he you know he he did, he found a way to monetize something that people wanted to feel good about and create it. So this is where the world's going. You're you're going to where a guy creates you know very uh, very 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 uh, uh, juvenile content becomes a billionaire versus people back when I was a kid that actually did things that changed the world. Create an operating system, create a uh, device, create a, uh, a personal computer to change the world. So it's not going in the right direction. So when you get this kind of stuff going on. So I probably talked long enough, but I haven't been on for a while. So I want to say a few things. I will continue to make videos, hopefully as many nights as I can, maybe every night, maybe not, but I'll try to do as much as I can. Because I'd like to talk more. I want to talk about the, the economy. I want to talk about cryptocurrencies. I want to talk about EOS. And I just want to talk about things in general. And that's what I'd like to have this channel be about. I appreciate you watching.